Several of you have asked me how to get good grades. Well, let's take a look at that. Well, the wrong thing to do for mixing grays is using black and white to make the gray and adding into the color. It's going to dull your color when you do that. But the really best way to go about getting grays or neutrals, as we should call them, is to go by the color wheel and mix complements. But wait just a moment. There are some complements that might not give you exactly uh, exact neutral gray. And those are the tertiary complements. Let's just go through that just a moment. Uh, for example, yellow green and red violet. Those are tertiary colors. They have yellow and green, red and violet. Both have blue in them. Green has blue and violet has blue. So if you use those two colors and expect to get a neutral, it's going to be kind of blue. What would you do about that in case that's the route you went? What's the complement of blue? The complement of blue is orange. You add a little bit of orange into that and that should give you the gray that you need. So there's one caution and one time when the color wheel or using complements might not give you an exact neutral. But there's something else too I want to actually show you on the, on the palette and on a canvas here. And that is, um, well, some students will say to me, well, I mixed two complements. I mixed yellow and violet, and, and I got red. And so let's look at why that might happen and what you can do about it. So what the colors that are safe to use as uh, to neutralize each other from the wheel are the primary colors and the secondary colors. So got that little key. Let's take just a look here at yellow and purple because those are, those two colors together seem to be about the trickiest. All right, so I have here uh, as a purple, you can see it's very very dark purple. Um, this is the dioxazine purple by Gamlin, and then I have also here um, a really nice yellow. It's Hansa Yellow Light by Utrecht. Now we would think those two are complements. We call this purple, we call that yellow. Well, a color as it comes out of the tube might not be, even though it's called purple or called yellow, it might not be an exact registration of that hue. Well, let's see if we, what we have here. So if I take the violet, the doxine purple, and I pull a little bit of it into purple, I mean into yellow, and I keep pulling a little bit. And the, the, uh, this is another thing about the proportion of it. And I keep pulling it in. Well, you see it begins to turn to turn into a color that we know to be um, kind of raw umber. Uh, that's with just that mixture. I keep pulling a little bit of yellow into it. And a little bit more yellow into it. Now, how do I know the point at which it is neutralized? Well, <clears throat> If it becomes, if it's a point where it no, lo, no longer is purple and starts becoming yellow, then it hasn't been neutralized. You see here, it begins to look like, um, a, more like a, uh, a, a raw sienna. And so then if I add more yellow, say, well, surely, surely we can neutralize that. And then it will become more like a yellow ochre. Why is that? It's because the purple is too red. The purple doesn't have enough blue in it to actually um, counter that. So what can we do about that? Well, let's go ahead and add just a little blue to it. And this is the way you think about it. So rather than to fight and complain because you didn't get an exact neutral, well then look at what's going on. Why couldn't you get exact neutral? I can come back here I could add, well, I can move in the other way and say, let's, let's, let's just add a little bit more purple this way. And we begin to get kind of a brown there, which begins to feel kind of orange. And that is our clue that it has too much red, that the purple has too much red in it. Orange, the complement of orange is blue. Now, if we add a little bit, this is ultramarine blue, if we add a little bit of blue into that, it should neutralize it. And there too, we need to be uh, 
we, we need to have control. Let's pull that down here. I'm going to add a little bit of white into that so that we can see what we have. And see, we have not quite enough blue added to it because it's still brown. Well, it's still neutralized. That's neutral. Brown is more neutral than, uh, than yellow. Let us add a little bit more blue and we'll watch it turn gray right here before our eyes. See, it's, it's beginning to get more gray. Add just a little bit more of the blue and it begins to get even more gray. And I believe, not quite, it's, that's really stubborn. And the reason it's so stubborn is because the doxazine purple is a very strong color, a strong tinting strength color. Ultramarine blue is a very weak tinting strength. So it's going to take in proportion more of the ultramarine blue. And now here we begin to see it feel more, more neutral. Now let's see. Let's test that on the palette and see what that feels like. So um, I'm going to put this little more white in there. Let's get that, little, uh, get that a little bit thinner. Here we go, right here. Let's see. Do we have a neutral? Uh, that's pretty great, don't you think? Now, so it's kind of a warm, it's still a little bit warm, so we could add a little bit more of the blue in it. Let's see here. There we go. That's getting more neutral. Now, let's see what we we had before. Uh, if I can replicate that right here. Before we add the blue, this is what we're going to get. We're going to get, with those two colors, we're going to get uh, a neutral but it's going to lean more towards brown because it has too much red in it. So this is common sense stuff. Whenever you've got two colors that are called the same thing, as you see on the color wheel, doxazine violet, doxazine purple is called purple. Well, we usually say purple when we're talking about violet. Those words are used interchangeably. Hence a yellow light. Uh, that's yellow. Uh, and so we might think, well, those will neutralize each other. They do neutralize each other but they don't give you an exact neutral and exact gray. So you can always um, you can always add in another primary if you can determine uh, which of those colors or which which primary is more dominant in the mixture. For example, I determined here that there was just a little bit more red in this violet. And and so then if we add uh, if we add the blue back uh, orange, I'm sorry, uh, red in the violet with the yellow making orange. And so then if we add that blue back in, that then gives us that neutral. So color's a fun thing. Uh, on our, in our uh, vi full-length video lessons on dianemice.com, we have lots and lots of le lessons dealing with different aspects of color and, and how color behaves. So if you're really interested in pursuing this exciting field of color, why not go over there and, and give that a try? And if you would like me to do a quick tip to answer a question you have, drop us a comment right down here, and we'll be happy to put that on the list. And there's your quick tip.